Hello YouTube. Well, here I am on a brand new channel. In case you're wondering why I've gone for a new channel as opposed to putting this on my regular channel, well, yes, there's the 15 minute limit, but I look at it this way. If I can't explain a concept in 15 minutes, then I'm doing something badly wrong. In case you're a geek, yes, the word Linux is in the title of this new channel, but it's not aimed at you. It's aimed instead at you. Yes, you. The person who would go into the average shop, have done a bit of research on gigabytes and megabits, and uh, uh, after a bit of consideration think, I want that one, and walk home with it, expecting perhaps miracles from it. This channel is for you. What I'm hoping to do is answer questions and hopefully deliver a few more bits and pieces your way that you might not otherwise have known hopefully in plain English because an increasing number of people are coming to me not only friends as used to be but friends of friends wanting to get value for money out of their computing and well when all they know the only way they know is to go into one of these high street shops or go onto an internet and shop and try and pick something that, that they hope will deliver what they need. They're onto a loser before they start. But the, because there are other choices out there, one of those choices is an operating system called Linux. And that's what I'll be focusing on here, which will be basically open source software, open source solutions, and well, so, okay, not only Linux, because there are some open source solutions that you can use on your Windows or Mac machine as well. But primarily we'll be sticking to Linux because it's pretty much one of the most cost-effective options out there. Now, <clears throat> who am I to be starting a channel like this? Well, I've been into IT for more than 20 years. As a result of a bit of a varied career, I've been into it all. Hardware, software, and pretty much customer support. So my main job is a mix of all of them. So I'm sort of a part techie, part um, at your shelter sort of person. And that's why I'm attempting this channel in the first place. Because, well, the number of people that are coming to me, I thought I'd better do something about this before my life drains away into uh, spending time at other people's shoulders. So, yeah, use this channel as you will. Feel free to ask me questions and I'll see what I can do about them. Uh, in the absence of questions, then I'll probably pick topics myself and put them up. As for the frequency, who knows? Because even though I'm a techie, there's no way that I can know it all. Absolutely no way. I rely on other people in areas where I have little knowledge because the whole sphere of IT is absolutely massive. It's huge. It's no wonder that people get bewildered. And if I'm getting bewildered and I'm a techie, what is the average person? What chance do they stand? So, hence this channel. Ask questions in the comments, PM me, and we'll see where we go from here. If you're going to buy a computer, then it makes sense to first of all think of what you're going to use it for. I mean, if you're going shopping for a new car, you pretty much choose one that fits what you want it for. If you're doing a lot of cruising, you might want one with a, a comfortable engine that can handle the motorway easily and is nice and easy uh, to sit in, comfortable, you know. If you're going to shift a lot of stuff around, you might want an estate car. And so it is with computers. There's a lot of different computers out there. 
So let's go through just a few things because a lot of people don't even know what a computer is capable of. Some of these things actually also need a connection to the internet as well as having the computer itself. But we'll come onto that in a later video. One of them is email, electronic mail. Instead of writing your letter and put it in the post, email is a method of you type it out and it gets electronically sent to the recipient. Usually it's with them instantly. You can also add attachments to your email. Say, if you've taken a photograph of the family pet and you want to forward it to someone, you can do that. Web browsing. Now, I couldn't come up with an easy, uh, easy way of describing this, but the web is basically the World Wide Web. In other words, the Internet. And the browsing part, a web browser is something that allows you to browse the World Wide Web so you can take a look at what it has to offer and see it on the screen and even interact with it. You might know uh, some common web browsers by name like Internet Explorer, Firefox, Opera. You may have heard those names banded around and they are very common web browsers. A lot of people still use their computer for word processing. Instead of handwriting a letter they can type it out, make any corrections, mistakes quite flexible and then print it off prior to sending it. Word processing has been around for quite some time and some people including me find it preferable because we can work on something, save it, think about it, come back to it. We've got other tools that we can use like spell checking. We can just hit a button and our work is spell checked for us. Music is another one. Instead of well, these days, you can get your music over the internet. You can actually purchase the music from an online store and files come down to your machine that you can then transfer to whatever device you want to play the music on. It's the modern way instead of going out and buying a CD or a tape or an LP. We'll cover music in more detail again. Photography. With the explosion of digital photography and digital cameras, a lot more people are taking pictures now than ever before. And somewhere to store those photos, look at them instead of on the small screen on the back of the camera, is typically what many people want to do these days. Video and voice chat. Now, because the internet is actually a more or less instantaneous transfer mechanism, you can actually wind up talking with someone at the other side of the world, for example. But instead of picking up a telephone, you use the computer instead and it sends the information down the internet. Because this kind of thing is so fast, if you get um, a webcam, a web camera, and that is like the web browser, it's a camera that's des typically designed to be used for the World Wide Web, you can actually have a video chat with someone. All these things are possible and it helps bridge the gap. You can then go on to things like spreadsheets and again we'll cover spreadsheets later on but they are an almost marvellous way to do calculations. If you've got complicated calculations or calculations that you do on a regular basis it's easy to use a spreadsheet for it. Um, I won't go into that in detail, we'll cover that later. Finance. Um, lots of people, including me, use software to keep a track of our bank accounts, to keep a track of our finances, especially if we've got multiple count accounts and various money that's coming in and out. It's a great way to keep a track of your house finances. Then you've got the more specialist things like home video editing. Even mobile phones these days are capable of recording video. And some people want to edit it before doing whatever they want with it. Store it, put it up on YouTube or something else like that. So depending on which of these and more you actually want to do with your computer, that'll play its part into which type of computer you eventually buy. So, 
worthwhile making up a list. And if you're not sure what the capabilities of computers are, find a friend who knows. Give them a cup of tea, some biscuits, sit them down and talk with them about the possibilities, what these machines can do. Once you work out what you want to do, what you might want to do, and what you definitely don't want to do, that is then a good starting point towards buying a computer and making sure that you make the most out of your money by buying a computer that's going to do what you want it to do and isn't going to be overkill. Because after all, you might not want to blow your entire budget on one machine. There are other things like backups to consider. Let's say you are a keen photographer. Later on we're going to be discussing how you can keep those photographs safe by making sure you have backup copies. So I hope that this would have uh, given you more thought about your starting point when you go and buy a computer.